my stitchy friends. I hope you are well today. Welcome, welcome. You found Lala D Stitches. My name is Laura and today we're here to talk about cross stitch. I'm so glad you found my channel. If you're new, welcome, welcome. If you're an oldie but goodie, uh, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here with me. I've got a lot of fun things to share, so this will be good. Um, let's see. So let's just jump right into it. I don't really have a lot of, again, not a lot of preamble. So <laughs> life is good. It's sunny. It's summer. And, you know, we're just taking each day as it comes. So that is good. Gracie had a bath a couple days ago. She was thrilled. <laughs> um, anyways, so let's say I had one. I had so many wonderful comments, actually, on the last two videos I've done. Uh, so thank you for that. I always enjoy reading them. I'm really slow these days at replying to them, um, but I do read them. And so please keep them coming because I love them. I really, I really enjoy them. Um, one of the questions I got, I think it was on my last Floss 2 video, was a request to go over my kind of my stitchy schedule, my self-imposed <laughs> stitchy schedule. So that's actually that's a great place to start today so let's do that um i used to do i used to so um <laughs> i i used to not have any kind of schedule whatsoever and in an attempt to be a bit more focused that doesn't work super well but, <laughs> but in an attempt to be more focused i started um assigning different days kind of a theme and when i was doing that it was mira monday tiny tuesday whip wednesday or whatever wednesday kind of a free day to choose what i wanted thursdays what were thursdays <laughs> uh remember I think for a while they were like carriage house sampling patterns because I have quite a few of those in whip form um, Fridays were fancy lady Fridays or fairy Fridays because I have a lot of fairy projects Saturdays have vacillated between Sal Saturday or sampler Saturday and then Sunday has been my full coverage day so if and when I do themed days that's kind of what my themes were and I would usually I would pick one or two projects so I could kind of choose between them because I I'm not a monogamous stitcher <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination and so I would pick ideally one project and it would stay in that like if we're looking at we'll just pull up an, a blank calendar here we'll look at November um, so Mira Monday, I would pick one and I would do it all the Mondays, the same project or um, in months where I'm less committed to one project, I'd pick two projects and I could pick between those two Miras on Mondays. So I have a little bit more flexibility and that's kind of how I would do it. And that worked really well. I did it for, I think I did it that way for six months or so and was enjoying that. But then in March, or sometime in February, because I, I did it in March, I started it in March, I thought of doing a themed month, because I've got a lot of projects, I've got a lot of whips. <laughs> and so I thought it would be fun to kind of assign a theme um, for my projects each month, and then that would help me pick what I want to work on because I'm a seasonal stitcher as well. So outside of Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, 4th of July, you know, the major holidays, um, there's some flexibility. Like in February, I don't want to just stitch heart projects because Valentine's Day for us isn't like a huge, a huge deal. So, um, so I did a magical March. So I have assigned it. This is new for me. I've assigned it, assigned it, I can't speak. <laughs> assigned it is not a word. <laughs> I have assigned um, for each month a main overarching theme. And then this back page of my 
book of days, I'm just using to write down my new starts, anything new I start in those months. And I average one or two new starts every month. Um, let me silence my devices. Oops, not that button. <laughs> let me silence my thing here real quick so that we which button is it i can never tell okay i can never decide is it the phone with the like sound waves coming out of it or is it the bell <laughs> it's the bell <laughs> but anyways a little intermission there um so let me tell you what i've chosen for this year's themes and i'll say within that I had started in March. I was doing my my theme and then I was trying to assign days as well. And that wound up being too much. That was that it was just too much. It was too specific. It was too demanding on okay, it's magical, but then it's Mira and it's magical, but then it's tiny. I don't know. Like it just, it didn't work as well. And I tried to do that for a couple of months and finally I just abandoned that. And I was like, okay, it's just this month, this is the theme and I'll pick however many projects I want to work on and kind of assign them days. And that's worked a lot better for me. So my themes are magical March, April was wings and gardens. So any like butterflies, moths, birds, anything with wings, or garden themed, so flowers, because, you know, spring, April, flowers, I don't know. <laughs> May, my theme was sunshine and nature. So again, anything that to me spoke sunshine or earthy things, Earth Day kind of kicked that theme off. June was summer and patriotic. Uh, last month, July, was sci-fi July, and that was really fun. And then I wound up actually doing one week of... I think they call it Jolly July, Christmas in July, um, which you'll see when I show you my projects. And that was fun. I've never done, I've never stitched so far out of season before, but um, last month is actually, I started doing, I picked a handful of projects. I think it's seven or eight projects. And I gave each project three or four days together instead of spread out over the course of the month. Let me, I'm gesturing a lot here, but <laughs> um, so instead of like a column of days, so once a week I would work on this, I've been doing three days together and that totally has shifted the sense of accomplishment and it's been very rewarding. I love it. You can really see the project can uh progress condensed into those three days instead of it spread out and i do my before pictures and my after pictures which is great but um and that's where you can see that difference um but this doing it all together in chunks makes it so that i can see the project progress as i'm going which has been very exciting that's been really good um for my brain <laughs> so i'm continuing that through august uh, but back to my theme. So July was sci-fi July. August, my theme is oceans. September, my theme will be owls and mushrooms. And because uh, we're going into fall, but I wasn't quite ready to fully commit to strictly autumn projects. Uh, October is going to be cryptids and ghosts because I have a lot of, you know, Halloween kind of cryptid projects and so I thought okay we'll find it either has to have a, a cryptid like Bigfoot or Loch Ness monster or you know whatever or it has to have a ghost in it so that'll be fun and I have a lot of whips that meet that criteria so and, and that was kind of my thought as I was making these themes to have um to be able to source from my whips and stuff in my stash so November is just going to be autumn themed. So I'll pull out everything with turkeys and colorful autumn leaves. And it, it's just kind of a autumn, whatever I interpret as autumn. And then December I'll do Christmas stitching. So, 
Uh, and January and February, I haven't decided yet because I started assigning months uh, when I was, you know, in March. So I didn't actually do that. I would imagine just off the top of my head, I'll probably do like January is winter stitching and February, I typically really like to stitch like Alice in Wonderland stuff. So it might be like, a, I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out when we get there. I'll have to uh, do it all again in my my next book of days. But um, yeah, I'm really enjoying the monthly themes rather than the, um, at least right now, than the daily themes. But that, just in case, for those who are curious, that is how I have done it for either version. I am no longer combining them because it's madness. <laughs> um, anyways, so let me pause really quick and I'll be right back with you. You guys won't even know the difference, hopefully, but I haven't normally paused in my videos, but I forgot to get my iPad with my before pictures. So let me go do that. I'm back. <laughs> I have my tablet and we are good to go, I think. Okay, so let's jump into the stitching I did the last half of July and yesterday. <laughs> and then we'll talk a little bit about my plans for August. And, and then I'll let you go to go do some stitching. <laughs> um, so hopefully you're doing some stitching while you watch or something. That's always fun too. Um, okay, sorry. A text came in while I was <laughs> on pause and now my, my brain is swirling about a different thing. So, okay. Uh, let's start, well, we'll just start at the top of my stack. So the first one I'm going to show you is, uh, one of my current Sal's stitch alongs that I'm doing and it's called the castle homecoming by the frosted pumpkin stitchery. And I purchased the kit, uh, to do it. So I'm working off of that. And this is where I was at the end of part two. So I had the bridge done, the banners, my three little guys, my little magical wizard, and um, and part three dropped, I think it was the 23rd, something like that, the end of July. <laughs> Where are we? This month, this year's going like, pfft, can't believe it's August already. Um, anyways. So the third part is this cute little knight with his mushrooms and this dragon. And I, I'm just trying to find a picture here. Where did it go? I, it's, this was so much fun. This was more fun for me than stitching the bridge, <laughs> which was a lot. Um, this is not exactly as it was charted. I, I mean, well, so it is as charted but it's not the called for colors. I did a little bit of customization because I started working on the body of my dragon and all I could think with his little round belly and <laughs> magical little toes was of the sword and the stone, <laughs> which is an old Disney movie that I grew up watching. And it, um, at the end, Mad Madam Mim turns into a dragon and, and loses the battle with a disease. And so obviously the spots are in a different spot, um, not on his back, they're on her belly. Um, but <laughs> all I could think of was this Mad Madam Mim as I was stitching it. And so I was like, okay, how can I make this still cohesive with everything else? but kind of a nod to Madam Mim. So I changed her spots from, it was originally called for to be like, uh, I think it was around this color green, a brighter green. And so I, I put in a, a pinky red. I didn't want to go true red because there's red nowhere else in it. So it's just kind of a nod to the red, but blendy, right? And this dragon has no hair. So I had to put the purple in other places. So to balance it, I did the horns the wings and the little feet, but oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so tickled. I love how it turned out. I love how it turned out. And this cute little knight with his roasted marshmallows. It's adorable. This was really fun. And it was nice to get it done before the end of the month so I can really focus on my themed projects for this 
these coming few weeks because the next part won't drop until again I think around the 23rd 24th something like that it's later in the month um, so that was that was fun to work on and it went so quickly compared to the previous part okay oh and the, I'm stitching it for like I said I bought a kit so it's the fabric is a 16 count Ada from picture this plus called valor and other than a couple changes here and there, I'm, I'm just doing it as called for. It's a little tough to do customizations. I've never done customizations on a mystery cell before because I don't know what's coming next. So it's a bit risky to make any major changes, not knowing what's gonna sit around it, if anything. Um, but I figure as long as it, if, as long as it meshes with all the other colors, it can't be too bad, right? <laughs> We can always shift if we need to further on. Um, okay, so my next one, I worked a little bit on my Barbara Anna Four Seasons, which it doesn't want to focus. And I have been working on this one pretty consistently this year, trying to, um, trying to get a finish on it. Because I started this one in 2021. Uh, I had purchased a kit from Nitka, which I'll link below the website. And this is where I was on the summer going into it. So I had I had started it and I'd kind of dabbled my way across it um, over the last couple years. But last win or this past winter, so I think it must have been January, I was like, okay, let's get this done. I'm gonna pull it out. And I finished the winter one and during the spring, oops, spring part of the year, I, spring quarter, I finished spring and so now my task is summer and this is where I started. So it was marked but um, not a lot going on there and I got to here. So most of her dress is done. Play nice. <laughs> Um, and it was just happy to stitch. It was really, really fun. I mean, the little lighthouse automatically gets my heart. The sunshine is, it, the colors are so fresh and happy. And yeah, it's just been a lot of fun to stitch. So I have a little bit, I think it's of this teal in her sleeve that comes in down here and then her feet and the bottom half is completely done. So before September 21st and we officially go into autumn, time, um, I'll finish the rest of her, which will put me almost done. It's so fun. <laughs> and I love the details and the skirts and the dresses and stuff, but I feel like for me, the magic is in their, the arches that come over them. The, the details in those are so sweet. The snowflakes and the butterflies and I think I think summer has yeah strawberries that are hanging from her arch and yeah anyways it's just really sweet it's lovely to work on on this what I'm assuming is a raw linen it was just part of the kit so but delightful to work on super fun so I'll pull that out at some point this month get a few more stitches into it um, just so I keep making progress, but the, it doesn't really have a formal day. That'll just be like an hour here and there before I jump into my assigned, uh, my assigned project for that day. Okay, so the next one is called Santa's Trips. It's a Barbara Anna design as well. Let me get you our main picture which is hiding somewhere under my nose. It's right there. <laughs> okay, so this is what it will look like when it's completed. If I can get it without a glare, we've got kind of a funny lighting day. It's totally bright and sunny outside, gorgeous blue skies, but I have a lot of trees around my home. And so when I actually get that light <laughs> is usually later in the afternoon. Um, Anyways, so that's what it will look like. And 
we when I pulled it out, I hadn't worked on it since uh, Christmas time. And I'd make good progress on it last year. I think I'd started with just one square and a little bit of that corner here. Um, and so I'd made a lot of progress through December on this, but turns out when you've got oodles of time to stitch and you give it three days, <laughs> you make a lot of progress even in just three days, which tells me it tells the logical side of my brain that if I just buckled down, I could literally finish this in a week <laughs> or so, like just over a week, probably, if I really focused on it. You know, that's that's not what we're here for. We're here to stitch for fun. So <laughs> there's no, no uh, demand for this to happen in any kind of timely fashion. But anyways, I love it. I think it's so beautiful. The border... It's to die for. It's just so yummy. I love this middle block with them holding the star in between their hands. I think that's really sweet. And stitching the, bin the giant bunny was funny. Uh, this one has my favorite block where they're riding a giant pig. <laughs> and I, I, I'm excited to stitch that one. That one will be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm stitching this on an R&R &R linen, uh, 32 count. Its color is Beach Brew. And yeah, stitching beautiful. It's lovely fabric. So I figure I'll, I'll finish this one this year. Um, yeah, not a complicated stitch. It's really delightful to stitch. It's one of those ones that it just kind of flows, but it's interesting. It doesn't, it never gets boring for me. I don't know. I love Barbara Anna stuff. Okay, next. I need a bigger picture here. There we go. Next one is part of my Christmas stitching again. This is called Gift of Peace. We really have a glare here. Let me. Is that too dark now? <laughs> See? It's weird lighting. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Gift of Peace by Lavender and Lace. It. I came across this pattern last fall. I feel like it was November-ish. And I started it in December. And I, I mean, I just, I fell in love. It's so elegant and beautiful. And I love his basket of bounty here and the little dove in his hand. And really, really beautiful. Beautiful design. Um, I love stitching lavender and lace designs. This is where I started. So that's what I had gotten done last December. He was kind of a floating head with the beginning of some shoulders. And I'm really excited to show you this one. He's so handsome. <laughs> oh, I got so much done. So his uh, cowl or ruff on his jacket is complete and it threw me off because in the picture it looks like it's a warmer brown i thought i was stitching the wrong color it is the call for color it's just very similar to my background <laughs> which is by the way my fabric is fabrics by steph driftwood it's a 32 count it's beautiful you can see it has these hints of green just kind of randomly throughout it and so it really nods to the Christmas feel without being Christmas like you could put anything on this um but I I I mean I'm a I'm loving it I love getting this green work going up here the beginnings of the ribbon that wraps around it the sash that comes down the details in this are gorgeous here's our little dove anyways my handsome Santa <laughs> I love him I'm excited to work on him again. So I am there. Okay, this next one, I couldn't find, I must not have taken a picture um, before I started the next step. So this is my birthday stitch from last year, Virgo by Nora Corbett. And she is lovely. Um, I'm stitching her on a lilac, uh, oops, 
a lilac linen, <laughs> I can't think of words, and this isn't quite where we were last time, but like I said, I couldn't find a picture. I had completed her stitching and was ready to start beading. So I wish I could say drum roll, I totally have a finish, but I, I think either they didn't have the final bead or I didn't, I don't know why I wouldn't have purchased it if they didn't have it, if they had had it. But I have all but one bead uh, one kind of bead, I guess is the way to say it, because it's not a singular bead to go in. Um, but one more color of bead to do, and she is completely done. So I need to scoop my little buns down to the cross stitch shop. And, and if they don't have it, I'll just find something similar to substitute in. I looked through the beads I have. I don't have a huge bead stash because I haven't done a lot of beading yet. Um, but I have a lot of projects that are going to need beading, so that will grow. <laughs> um, yeah, she is she is stunning. I, I am so excited to get that last bead in there and then start looking for a frame for her because she is literally like 1% away from com completely done. And she is beautiful. So you can see the beads, the final beads come right up through here. And then there's this one necklace. And then I think they come right through those as well. But that's all there is. That's all that's left. She's really been a joy to stitch. She's so beautiful and I've enjoyed every moment of it. Woo! <laughs> She's so close. I'm so excited. <laughs> and the beading, I was, I think I mentioned last time I showed her that I was intimidated by the beading. There is no reason to be intimidated. Beading is not hard. It just, you know, and it's such magic to the design to add those beads in. It, it was so rewarding. <laughs> oh, it just fills in all those negative spaces, those little holes that you've left while you've been stitching. And, and yeah, it's not hard. I just did it with matching DMC. I didn't have any, I mean, they mentioned, I've watched a couple videos and like you can use monofilament, you can use these other kinds of, threads and I didn't have any of those. So I just, I went with a similar floss to my, my beads and that worked out great. I have no complaints. I did a full X through all of them so that they're really secure and they're going to stay in place. And yeah, anyways, I love it. I'm so happy with her. <laughs> okay. So Next, moving right along. This one I pulled out. I don't think I actually had this one selected. This was an interloper. It was just, I I was done stitching Christmas. I had worked on a gift of peace for like four days, I think, and I was ready to move on to something else, but I wasn't quite ready to jump into my August stitching. I'd finished my sal, or caught up rather, on it. So I went shuffling through my whips, and this felt summery and and was already started so I could just kind of pick up wherever I'd left off. So this is Dockside Quilts by Design Works. It is a kit. And I started out with about that much done. And it is basically a full coverage. There are some white gaps left and I'm considering stitching white into those. I'll have to see because sometimes leaving the fabric there can give some dimension that filling in the stitches won't give. Um, it's only really in the sky and a little bit of the water that there's any white showing, any white fabric. It's just on a white Ada and this is where I am. <laughs> um, but I think I'll wait till the end and see, or when I'm getting more stitching in there and see if it's, if I'm liking seeing the bigger patches of Ada through here, or if I want to fill that in with stitching. I'm not sure yet. I'm undecided, but I got that whole hedge done. All of that. So this is actually the beginnings. You can kind of see the structure of the side of the house and the first roof line, um, which is very exciting. It, it'll be good to kind of get into some more stuff. This bush was a lot. <laughs> you can tell it's very confetti heavy. And I actually wound up with a pretty considerable 
but unlocatable error. And so there's some serious fudging, but you'll never know it because it just looks like a bush. <laughs> I do have some backstitching to do in the stones and a couple spots just that gives some added definition. But other than that, that was really good progress. So yeah, it was fun. I don't remember how many days I gave that. I don't know if I gave it a couple days. I guess it doesn't matter, but <laughs> it was fun to stitch. That's what's important. It fit the, fit the bill for the moment. Uh, this one was also a last minute kind of needed to fill an extra day in the month. And so I pulled it out of my stash. I only stitched two days, I think on this one. So garden sampler, I saw earlier this spring, I think it was New Hampshire stitcher. She was working on this and hers is her stitching just in general is so beautiful. And she, she's very productive. <laughs> she's a lot more focused than I am. Um, but she had started this and hers was beautiful. I think she's stitching hers on a soft blue or a like dove gray. No, it, I think it's a soft blue. Anyways, I, I, would, I would have to go back and look, but uh, hers is so beautiful. And I, I had seen a couple other people stitching on it. And finally I was like, okay, I gotta get that. I've gotta add that to my collection. <laughs> so I did, and I started it in June. And you know, I'm not even gonna show this picture because it's not really accurate. I had basically gotten a little bit of green done and the acorn. So I had done this without the fill in, all of this green and the acorn. So what I have added in is the fill in, this flower, I think it's a zinnia, uh, all of the letters, the butterfly and the ant. So it's starting, I love that I'm starting to get some more of the colors on here because that's kind of what gives it the life. The green was great. It looked good on the fabric. I had no complaints, but adding, adding some of these, the full, more of the full palette on there really is giving it some magic. It's pretty fun. It's been, I'm stitching it on, it's a 27, I have it right here. I got smart, you guys. I clipped, so on the back of my, I have these project cards, basically, little, five by seven cards or three by seven, three by five cards, <laughs> um, three by five cards that I write like the project, what fabric I'm using when I started it. Am I making any substitutions? Stuff like that. Um, but I tend to leave them in my project bags <laughs> when I'm trying to share things with you. So I got smart and I paper clipped it to my main picture, <laughs> which is great. It's right there. If I can just remember to look at it. Anyways, this is a Bestitch Me Even Weave. It's a 27 count. It's The color is Lunar. And I had actually purchased this. It's, I was part of a bigger piece and I was thinking about putting um, Summer Quaker on it. And I wound up going, you'll see the different direction I went. So I had extra fabric that wasn't assigned to a project at that point. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yep, we're gonna start it there. <laughs> it's gonna be perfect. And I'm really happy with how the colors are popping off of this. Plus with it being an even weave and 28 count, I mean, it's just easy, easy on my eyes. I get chronic migraines that can make it really hard for me to focus or see some days. And so if I have one of those bad head days, at, but I could still do something, like I could make myself do something to distract myself from, you know, the battle going on in my skull. Um, bigger counts are easier for me to see. So I have started to go into bigger counts more consistently, just so I have some of those projects to fall back on. I still have a few projects on 40 count, 36 counts, a lot of 32 count and stuff like that. But, um, but it's really nice to have some of those bigger counts. And I even have started investing in a couple really lovely, uh, 14 count Ada's that are hand dyed. Um, for that reason, because that adds another level of, I'm not having to identify fibers. It's just whole, 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 whole. <laughs> um, and that's just, it's better for my head some days. So, um, 
So stitch on what makes you happy and what is comfortable because there are no laws about this. <laughs> it's what you enjoy. Okay, so my final thing I worked on. Yesterday was the 1st of August, which, what? Um, but that meant I could start the Summer Quaker stitch along that is happening. It started in honor of Samantha the Huga Stitcher's birthday month. Happy birthday month, Samantha. I don't know what day it is exactly, but I wish you all the best. And I'm so excited to be stitching with you, with you and everybody else who's jumped on this wagon. It's, it's, I don't know if you're on Instagram or not, but it's everywhere. <laughs> In the last 24 hours, you're, I'm really seeing a lot of um, beautiful work being started on this project. And we've got different backgrounds being used and it's lovely, different sizes. And um, yeah, so this, this hashtag, if you wanna go see what everybody's doing or join it is live in the sunshine Sal. Hashtag live in the sunshine Sal, which is a line from the motif. And I love it. So I am stitching on a 28 count linen. It's a picture of this plus, and it's called sand. The color is sand, and that's my start. I had to start in the with the lighthouse. It was the closest to the center, and I've got kind of an oblong piece that's not equal. It's not equal on both sides, like how many, so I couldn't do really a corner start without trepidation. <laughs> um, so I started in the center, it was just like 10 stitches up or something like that. And that got me into this house, which gave me one of my favorite parts of the stitch. And then I can kind of go up into the border next. There's that first, um, through all the plastic, kind of green leaf border. And then you go up into the, the Quakers um, motifs. I am tickled. It was so much fun to work on. I'm so excited to work on it again today. So it gets the first three days of my month and frankly, I'm enjoying it enough. I think I'm gonna have to rearrange my, my calendar and add another three days later in the month. So something's gonna get the boot. I'm just not sure what yet um, because I love it. I am substituting a couple of colors. So I'm doing mostly the Cobb 4 DMCs, but I wanted my lighthouse to have a little bit of dimension, so I subbed the red, which was originally, I think, 304 or something, a pretty strong red, um, with Turkish red, 266 two, from Weeks Dye Works. And that worked out really nicely. It just gives a little bit of movement without being distracting. And that's what I was going for. And that's kind of what I'm going for with all of my substitutions. Right now I only have two that I've completely decided on. So this one I have multiple skeins of in stash and it will replace one of the blues in the Quaker parts. <laughs> so that will come out here in, in some of those. That's where we'll start to see that first. And this one is 1306, again, Weeks Dye Works, it's navy. Um, so it's very close to the called for DMCs, just a little bit of tonal texturing there, which I think will be fun and just make it a little bit unique. And yeah, so I'm not even gonna fold this one up because I'm stitching on it in a little while. <laughs> yeah, really fun. I told you the fabric. Okay, so that's everything I've stitched for the last, I guess it's almost two and a half weeks, something like that. Um, yeah, it's been good. I'm really enjoying the three days together. It, I'm finding that very satisfying. Um, okay, so going into August, which we're already in, and I'm noticing my... Mascara is leaking. Makeup, man. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got I've got my projects that I'm going to be stitching along the side, my plans, and then I've assigned them days, and they get a minimum of three days for the most part together. Like I said, I think I'm going to shuffle things around a little bit so that I can bring Summer Quaker into another 
another slot instead of like maybe down at the bottom if I can wait that long <laughs> we'll see maybe I'll get super into one of the other projects I have um, and then I've got a couple new starts planned so this will be fun I'm just gonna pop through them really quick and show you kind of where I am and what the plans are uh, so the first one be one of my reasons I focus so strongly on um, getting my castle homecoming caught up is because I want my sal of focus this month to be my treasure island. So this is an Al Forest embroidery free stitch along that started June. I think it was June. And they are, I think they're releasing patterns weekly. There's quite a lot more than this available right now. I am majorly behind, but I'm doing my own color conversion and, um, and it's on my own hand dyed even weave. So it's a fun project and it's perfect for the theme of oceans. So what, what's better than a pirate adventure? <laughs> I'll just put that there. So I'm excited to get more going on that. There's some really fun details that are already showing up in their releases. I think I'm gonna work on Seaside Tiny Town You've probably seen it. It's been everywhere, very popular this summer because it is freaking adorable. I still, that pelican <laughs> and the lighthouse, I think those are my favorite parts. So cute. And I have a little start on this one, just one house in the middle. And I think I'm gonna do, the reason this piece is so small is because I'm gonna do a flat finish. So I don't need a lot. Um, whether I do a flat fold finish and just put a little bit over or I do a soft finish and kind of, you know, I haven't decided exactly, but I know it's going to be small. It's not going to be framed. So um, that's giving me the flexibility. I was able to get quite a few pieces out of the piece of fabric I cut down from this. I'm stitching it on sand uh, Lugana from Picture This Plus. So sand is apparently the picture this plus of the summer for me. <laughs> um, okay, this next one. Oh, I'm excited to have this one come out. I actually worked on it just a little bit during uh, Stitch Mania. And it is my horribly mangled <laughs> carriage house samplings, the shores of Hawker and Hollow. Again, if you've been on on FlossTube or Instagram, you've probably seen it. It's not a new design, but it is, it is really neat. I am adjusting mine. I'm not gonna do, I was originally gonna do the full piece, but I have decided not to do that. I am going to, the basic shape I'm going to go for is two small squares. I'm gonna do the big ship and then two more small squares. And I am picking and choosing which my nose is so itchy. I'm so sorry. I keep like touching my face. Um, I'm picking and choosing four of the small squares to put in there. So it's not going to be just what you see there. I think the top two are these two. And then I'm doing, I'm trying to remember, I think it was this one and this house because I love this house. I think that's really neat. I think that's what I decided to do. And then the center. Um, and the, some of these other motifs are really neat. Like it would be fun to just do the moon at some point or, you know, just pick up different things. I love this house by the rocks. That could stand alone on its own little pillow or something like that. The I have nothing against the other motifs. I just decided I have quite a few of these larger ones going and I just decided to make it more achievable i think i was overwhelmed by the size of it anyways so i started this I had the first motif done i am doing a floss conversion on mine so some of it's dnc a lot of it is being subbed for over dyes weeks dye works uh classic color works i mean silks the water here is a silk because uh, i wanted it to be oregon is where i was living when i started this and the Oregon coast is very moody. So I wanted my water to be moody as well. And then I've subbed that. Anyways, yes, this border is not complete because 
I started stitching it in some kind of black overdyed. I think it's an onyx, but I have tried to, to find more and the dye lots have changed and I am struggling to find a good blendy mix to, to sub in. Anyways, so this gives you a good example of how big it will be though. It's just gonna be narrower. <laughs> That's basically the size it will be when it's done. So we'll put our ship in here and then two more down there, which I think will be fun. Again, it just kind of customize it a little bit to myself and um, and hopefully I'll get it done before I die. <laughs> this one is one I'd really like to have um, on my wall. I am not sure what my fabric is. I did not see, oh, I didn't see a tag in there because there's one on here. <laughs> It is R&R &R Linen 36 Count Fog Lifter Blend. That's what it is. <laughs> and it's lovely. I'll have a whole half of a piece left over so I can do something else on it too. It's really pretty fabric. Okay. This is a kit I started again in March. It was a Christmas present last year from my mother. And I have just the barest of starts <laughs> on it. This is the call for Ada. It's very stiff and I think I had considered swapping it out, but eh, I'm not going to. It's going to be fine. It'll be great. Get more stitching on it. It'll soften up as I handle it and, and it will be beautiful. This one will go pretty quickly once I get rolling on it, I think, because a good number of the stitches are just half stitches all of the sky and the water. So that will just, that'll just fly. So it'll be fun. Love me a lighthouse. Okay, this next one, Blackbird Designs, Octopus's Garden. You might be able to see on my wall. I'm not sure what shows up in the camera. Um, I did Yellow Submarine and I love it. And I actually had matching fabric that I started my Octopus's Garden on. So they would be a companion pair but I am going to restart it on this fabric because it's so pretty. And when I laid, I don't have the colors out here, they're in their project bag, but when I laid the colors on it, it just, it felt so much more under the sea <laughs> to have this soft green. Anyways, so I think that'll be really fun. I'm gonna do a restart on that one. And then I'll have this lovely piece of raw linen for something else. It'll be good. I'll just have to rip out that start, which isn't that much. It's totally doable. <laughs> I'm excited though. This is what I've wanted to move on for a while. Okay. This one is potentially a new start. It's a big one. It's beautiful. Crystal Mermaid Aquabella. Um, I was gifted a kit of all the floss, the pattern, and uh, beads that she needs. So all I had to do was go out and buy fabric, which was awesome. Um, and I chose this, which never photographs well. It's not as gray as it looks, but the fabric, the colors are so soft and gentle that um, they really, they read nicely on this. I think this is Jade. No, it's Tidal. Tidal by Picture This Plus. Um, but it is a possibility that this might be, just because of the scale of the project, it might be one that I, I'm not sure if I'll start it. I guess that's what I'm getting at. I'd really planned on starting it, but I'm not sure. Kind of going into August, it might wait till next summer. And that's okay. That's the beautiful thing about kits is they wait for us. <laughs> As do all of our whips. <laughs> uh, this was a new start in May. Uh, I am working slowly on at least starting <laughs> all of my favorites from the, this is a time for all the season series, but there's also the, a year, hmm, the other ones that they did last year that have like the bat and the, the woodpecker and the swans and the turkey and uh, the bear, I think, was one. There's an eagle. And they all came from the same series. It was a year in something. I don't remember. Uh, but this is from a previous year. I think it's 2021. Yeah. And I feel like it fits into the 
overall theme, but I liked this one better. <laughs> Anyways, so I got a small start on it. I'm going to put a few more days into it, see if I can kick some serious tushy with that one. Um, if you're interested in the fabric, so am I. <laughs> I think it's Outrageous by Fortnite Fabric. I'm stitching a couple other things on this as well. I'm pretty sure it's outrageous, but my information card is lacking information. So that sucks. Okay. This one is, so I have three days on, oh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so the first week of August for me, I have three days on the Summer Quaker, and then my next three days are going to be um, a start on Mermaid Lagoon by Satsuma Street. I love her patterns, and I actually have started this one twice on different linens, and it just never settled for me. So finally, I dyed my own fabric, and it's going to be so cool. So we're going to give her a good a good start and then <laughs> hopefully it will be the final start <laughs> on it. Okay, last but not least, beautiful, beautiful Nantucket Rose by Lavender and Lace. You're not getting a very good angle on her because of glare, but she is stunning. She is so beautiful. Um, I started her a number of years ago and I pull her out every summer and get a little bit into her. Um, last year I got the ocean and the house in and I'm undecided. I don't know which way I'll go. I could jump down into her dress and try to start make, making progress there. Cause I think just looking at it, it looks like it's a lot of more block stitching than confetti in her skirt. So even though it's gray, not super thrilling, um, I think it'll stitch pretty quickly. Whereas these bushes and the water and the house confetti heavy so even though I've put a good number of a good amount of time into this already it doesn't look like I've done very much <laughs> but she's beautiful another thing I could do I might go up instead into her sleeves and into her face and get that established so I don't know could go a couple of different directions but but it's beautiful I I really love lavender and lace patterns I have a number of them and they are beautiful. This is just a gray linen. I actually got this pattern and the fabric in an estate sale for a ridiculously good price. So I don't have any information on that. In fact, this tells you I whipped, if you don't have a sewing machine or a serger, that doesn't have to mean you have to tape your edges. Just do a little, take some floss or thread and do a, quick whip stitch. There's nothing glamorous or beautiful about this at all. But years later, and this is years later, I bought this. I did not start this this long ago. I will say that. I only started it a couple of years ago. But um, I purchased the, I got the fabric and patterns and stuff from the estate sale 15 years ago. So not that this gets a ton of handling, but you can see that just a quick little sloppy whip stitch is very effective at protecting your raw edges. So if you don't have the machines, fret not because you can still protect your edges really inexpensively and it doesn't take very long to do it. Um, it's nothing fancy. Anyways, so there you have it. <laughs> That's all I've got for you, my friends. Uh, so that's my plans, all ocean themed. I'm excited for them. I think it's going to be a really fun month of stitching. I've got some really fun movies lined up to watch while I stitch because you got to stick with a the theme. I mean, I might have to do a Pirates of the Caribbean marathon. I haven't done that in years and that would be really fun. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you is I do have a couple of book recommends. Uh, well, one of them's a recommendation and... Two of them are on, they're what I'm going to be reading this, this month. So the first one, this is just, a, it's a, it's summer in a book for me. Like it, I read it during the summer. I took it on vacation a couple of years ago. 
something about the cupcake on the front <laughs> spoke to me and I was like, okay, I can try that. Um, Little Beach Street Bakery. So a woman is just coming out of a pretty terrible relationship and she runs away to this island off the coast, uh, the Cornish coast. And, and it is this small, small com closed community and that is a fishing community that's really been hit hard by the economics of the area. And she goes in there and finds this derelict bakery and she's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refocus my life and revamp this. And it is delightful. And there is an excellent Star Wars fandom reference in there <laughs> and just a delightful read. It is, it is gentle and lovely and I feel like my emotions when I think about this book are in colors. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but like, it's, it has a very specific feeling to it. And it's, it's a good one. It's cozy. <laughs> it's a good one. So I recommend that. It's by Jenny Colgan. I'd never read her before, but just a real easy summer read. I loved it. Um, this one I'm excited to read the, the sea garden. My sister gave it to me and I, you know, it entered my to be read stack and you know, it's time to have it done. So it's a dual timeline. It looks like between, uh, present day and world war two and it takes place in the Mediterranean. So that'll be interesting. She told me very good things about it. <laughs> I'm excited to read it. And then my last one, uh, I'm so excited. I mean, look at the cover. <laughs> it's gonna be good, you can just tell. Um, if it's written half as well as it was painted, it's gonna be good. The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter um, came highly recommended to me from a small bookshop owner in uh, Anacortes while we were on vacation. A couple of months ago so while we were camping we went into little bookstores we love doing that going into little little privately owned bookshops and you just get such great customer service and you have such great conversations and they all have this wonderful smell and <laughs> it's I love small bookstores they're wonderful anyway so I'm excited to read this and I'll let you know how it goes um, anyways yeah, that's all I've got for you, my friends. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. I hope if you've had the intense heat that some areas have had that you're getting or <laughs> that you're able to find some relief because we can't control the weather, but you know, hopefully you have somewhere cool and comfortable. And, um, and I hope above all that you're getting lots of good stitching going. <laughs> um, don't forget to save the chubby unicorns. And I will see you back in a couple of weeks, just in a little bit later this month. I'll do my anniversary video, which will be an extra. And then we'll come back a week or two after that for the follow up on what I just showed you. My anniversary video I've decided is going to be a whip parade. Everybody's doing mid year whip parades. So I thought, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> We'll do that. Um, so yeah, I'll see you then my friends. Happy stitching.